We're still talking about the Commodore 64 in today's episode, but we will be using a program that was created in 2006 today. So I suggest that you join me for one of the hits of 2006, Weird Al's White and Nerdy. In the last two episodes, we learned how it's possible that in the Commodore 64, the statement poke 53280,1 could set the border color to white. We then hand compiled this into the commands load a value 1 store a into the location d020 and then we returned from subroutine. And we made our program that in machine language could set the border color to white. So we converted this into the hex values. A901 and this into the values 8D20 D0 and this into the value 60. And ultimately what we ended up with was a data statement in our basic program that looked like this. Now, this was an incredible amount of work to go through just to set the border color to white. And you're probably wondering if maybe there is an easier way to have efficiently done this. And it turns out there is. And it's called an assembler. So for this video, we're going to be demonstrating the Turbo Assembler, which is available on style64.org. Amazingly, these tools are actually still being maintained. The C64 one, which we'll be using, seems to have last been updated in September of 2006. But the cross-compiler tools, which we may get into in a later episode, are available for the PC, and they've been updated within the last year. So we're going to download the project and launch it in our Commodore 64. So we've put the disk in our Commodore 64, and we are ready to load the assembler. We're going to start by loading the directory listing for the disk, which is not something we've yet demonstrated in these Commodore 64 videos. As you can see, there are many programs installed on this disk, but the thing that we care about right here is this TMP version 1.2 slash S. And like I said, there's many different versions and they all come to down, down to different types of hardware that you might have installed on your Commodore, upgrades, that kind of thing. But we're just going to load the default one because we are starting with a stock Commodore 64. Now, if you are used to using Commodore programs, you might expect to be able to type run here, but you can see nothing happens. And that's because the assembler loads itself into a special location in memory. So to launch the assembler, we're going to need to type sys8 asterisk 4096. And just like in our previous examples, we're telling the computer that we want to jump to a certain location in memory and start executing the program. So now that we're here, the obvious question is, what do we type? And if you notice, the three commands that we cared about were load, store, and return from subroutine. So let's go look back at our Commodore 64 6502 CPU reference that we used and last episode. Now, as you can see, since we have return from subroutine up on here first, 
we see that the capital R, T, and S. And that is to let us know that the name of this command is RTS. This is a mnemonic, and this is very common in assembly language programming to have a three or four letter abbreviation for each command that you want to execute. So we see return from subroutine as RTS. load accumulator is LDA and store accumulator is STA. So these are the kinds of commands that our assembler is going to expect us to type in. So loaded with this information we know from what we just saw that we want to load the value 1 into the accumulator, then we want to store the accumulator into memory position D020, and then return from subroutine. So let's see what happens if we try to do this in our assembler. So we're back in our assembler, and let's try typing these commands. We want to load the value 1 into the accumulator, and that seemed to do something. It centered it for us anyhow. Then we want to store the accumulator into the memory location D020. And then we want to return from subroutine. Now, what were to happen if we were to type something completely random here? We get this is pushed off to the left. So it tells us it didn't quite do what we expected it to do. So return from subroutine, or if we add an argument to it, which return from subroutine does not take, we get this message, illegal address mode. So this is pretty helpful. So those are our three commands. We want to load the literal value 1 into the accumulator. We want to store the value that's in the accumulator to memory location D020, then return from subroutine. Now, in this particular assembler, to get it to assemble the program that we just created into memory, we need to hit the left arrow key on our Commodore 64 keyboard and the number 3. And we can see here that zero errors were generated, and it created our program at the memory location 1000 hexadecimal. And then we see this message at the bottom, S to start or any other key to edit. So let's hit S to start. And this has now put us back at our Commodore 64 basic prompt. And we want to call that new routine that we just created and assembled in memory. And that 1000 translates to 4096 in decimal, since the Commodore basic interpreter would not let us type in hex. And we can do this and see that we have our border color white just as we expected with significantly less work than the examples from our last episode. And we can hop back into our assembler like this. And we can play with these things a little bit and say we want to set it to color 10 instead. Then we hit our left arrow 3 and our program has been assembled, sys, 4096, and now the border color is black. So this is a very basic introduction to assembly language and to using assemblers. And certainly this is a huge improvement over assembling everything by hand. And in the next episode, we're going to see, now that we have a little bit more power at our fingertips, what we can start making the computer do.